Hey guys, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm very excited to share with you some information. Now, it's really interesting because when you're up here on stage, your instinct is to actually share the best photograph that you've ever taken and then just inspire you and have some fun so I can look impressive. Today, it's not about me being impressive, it's about you being impressive by the end of this particular 30 minute presentation. Now, what do I mean by that? I want you guys to understand how you can get a simple subject matter, simple lighting, and turn it into profit. Because if you're not shooting with purpose, you're not shooting with an end product in mind, then you are not going to make the money at the end of the day. So I much would rather you be a thriving artist rather than one that's starving and award-winning and you can't rub two pennies together. So today, it's all about shooting for purpose and profit. Now, I want you to remember these lines. And if you're watching at home, do a screen grab. If you're here in the audience, there's a couple of times that I'll tell you, photograph the screen and learn what I'm about to tell you. So what we're going to do is this. This sentence has made me a lot of money. When I meet with clients, even before I book them, wedding and portrait, I will say my challenge is to create the most beautiful and meaningful photographs you can possibly imagine. Not only meet your expectations, but exceed them. Your challenge is to resist. I say that unashamedly to my clients. What am I basically trying to say? I'm saying the better I do, the more you'll spend. Would you like the, the problem of having so many photographs that you don't know where to start? Or maybe not knowing where to start because you don't like anything. So my challenge is to take the most beautiful and meaningful photographs you can possibly imagine, not only meet your expectations, but exceed them. Your challenge is to resist. Now, when it comes to a wedding, and even before a wedding, what opportunities do you have to sell some things? Now, if you're photographing digitals only, what a shame. Digitals only, what a waste of your time, your talent, the story of the couple that you're photographing. I do not offer my services without a physical product. So I'm gonna talk about an album, wall art, signature album, save a date cards, boudoir book or box set. Now I was doing this particular class at my home in Las Vegas and I was teaching a whole bunch of theory. And then I said, let's go out and photograph now. And my class thought I was actually gonna walk around the house and, and photograph different areas. I said, how about we create an album with one source of light? Let's just open up the blinds right over here. So we did. All my clients don't look like that. I'm just letting you know, <laughs> okay? But it doesn't really matter. I want you to uh, understand that all these photographs are done very simply. You turn the face into the light. Beautiful catch lights in the eyes. Look at how many ways these two photographs can be designed. Watch this. So I can put one photograph. I can put two. I can flip one. I can crop one a little bit closer. Or I can just use one. I took two photographs. The problem Especially with heterosexual men, you're photographing a gorgeous bride and you fall in love with her and you can't stop photographing her and you photograph 100 shots and how many photographs are going to show up in the album? Two, three. What am I saying for you to do? Take two, three. Just fall out of love by the time you get home to your, your partner, of course. But it's important that you slow down to get to the destination quicker. So let's keep on going. What else can we do here? All I'm doing is cropping a little bit differently. I can just crop into her lips. I can flip that one. We're still on the same two photographs, mind you. I've given you four or five ideas. In a moment, I'm going to show you the whole album with album spreads. That's where you want to get your phone out, take a photograph or a screen grab if you're watching at home so you can practice this, so you can achieve this in 10 minutes. What else can I do? Well, I lifted her arm up and I use that to frame her face, eyes down, widen the actual shot, and then I take a shot of her there as well. Different crop. If you do not show these photographs, then clients are gonna look at your work and say, why are you cutting my face? I show this work on my, on my website, show this work on my Instagram or social media, and people book me for that very reason. It's a very easy way to stand out. Cropping is an underrated thing. Now, this is unashamed. If you know me at WPPI or here, it doesn't matter where I've been speaking before. When I have a good crowd like this, I'm gonna use you. Unashamedly, if you like the information that I'm teaching and sharing, I want you to, in the count of three, clap, cheer, and freak out. You ready? Clap, cheer, and freak out in the count of three. Everyone will think, oh my God, there's something amazing happening, and then we're gonna multiply our audience. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Jerry, 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 yes. Good old Jerry Springer, I love it. Okay, thank you for that um, very unsolicited, uh, provoked uh, applause. All right, let's have a look at it. 
So now I'm going to go three quarter and I'm going to shoot back a little bit too. So I've got a different mood. Now every spread of an album should be a different mood, a different feeling, a different color palette, something different so it warrants being there. If it's too similar, it might not warrant being there. So you have to be in the family. You're not going to put boudoir over here and family shots over here. You're not going to put tungsten lit photographs over here and then outside in the actual sky over here. So now it's soft and sensible. Now I want something that's a bit more playful. So what I do is when I pose people, I certainly there's not much I can teach in 30 minutes. I'm focusing on shooting for purpose and profit. But what I want you to do is remember, turn the body of the female form away from the light source and the face back in. So now we have a shadow on the cleavage, shadow on the face, beautiful catch lights in the eyes, and this just works. I construct the pose, I pose with no emotion yet. I construct the, the architecture, then I animate, and the animation will break the formality of the pose. Does that make sense? Now, we're in the same light source, one window light here, one window light, I turn her body around, I crop her identity out, then I crop in a little bit closer. The exact same pose, cropped a little bit differently, gives me somewhere to go. Now, if you wanted to know what a younger, better looking version of me looks like, this guy. So all I did was I photographed him here, took a few steps to the left over here, and I got that shot. Wouldn't you say that that would still worth being in the album? Yes, it is. Then I just simply cropped him a little bit tighter and then cropped his face like that. This is with a 105 millimeter macro. And then the way I made him laugh in this particular spread, I said, you look like a younger, better looking version of me. And then he started laughing. I just needed a different mood and a different feeling and I got it. So now that I've celebrated them individually, individually, okay, and now I want them as a couple, great. So I have her featured and, and this whole spread's all about her. I suggest him. The next spread, I'll do the same with him. I'm featuring him, I'm suggesting her. Then I need another spread where I have them giggling and having some fun. And I keep on going. Remember now, all I did with it was this. I took this shot, I pressed the pause button, and I say to them, guys, pretend you're on a lazy Susan. Whenever you're posing someone, say, you're on a lazy Susan, keep your pose, and I'm going to turn you left and right. So I had the light bias to her, and then I turned them around and had the light bias to him. Make sense? Now watch what happens. These are all the shots that we took in literally about 10 minutes. If you've got your phone, I'll give you about 10 seconds to bring it out, take photographs, and I want you to practice this. The next time you're photographing a couple, I want you to practice this so it's second nature and you don't waste any bullets photographing anything that won't sell. Because once you have that, you know what you have? You have a saleable album. You have a saleable album. You've got your phone out, okay, quickly. I know a lot of you got disappointed there, boom, boom, and we come back to this one. That in the context of an album, that's a 26-sided album. Who would not buy that? If I just give them digital files, what a waste of my time, my talent, their story, their beauty, and their relationship. This is just the engagement shoot, so to speak. Now I have a save the date cards, and then I have a signature album. A signature album is at the wedding, you might have more negative space, for example, and you're leaving this for guests to actually sign their names. You're leaving negative space. Now, this is the best that I could do in Photoshop to emulate that. It's a little bit pedestrian, but you understand. Does that make sense, guys? We have to slow down, slow down to the get the destination quicker. Yes, they're a handsome couple, fantastic, no problem. Doesn't matter what the aesthetic is. As far as I'm concerned, they're a beautiful couple getting married or engaged. And what I want to do is celebrate them and create some beautiful shots that they can have in the physical form. Remember what I said? My challenge is to take the most beautiful and meaningful photographs you can possibly imagine. Not only meet your expectations but exceed them, your challenge is to resist. What I suggest you do, sell the guy wall art first. If you sell his wall art first, then that would sell itself, would it not? And then of course if you're buying the, the guy wall art, the girl wall art, well, now you've got that. So obviously, whether it's same sex, doesn't matter. As at, at the end of the day, if you don't offer it, you will not sell it. If you don't offer it, you won't sell it. In your studio, in your home, you must have large prints. You must have physical albums on your website. You must have albums that they can see so that you're already conditioning your clients that they're going to buy from you. Now, don't stop there. You also have the opportunity to photograph a boudoir session. 
Now, I'm not going to show anything too risque right now, but you get an idea. I could do totally do a boudoir session. And then if you're doing a boudoir session, don't just make it boudoir. You might start off with a very fashionable photograph because a lot of people might not want anything risque on the wall. So change the look, change the feeling, and then all of a sudden, I mean, living in Vegas, I'm just going to a dry lake bed, same girl, because this, wouldn't you agree, probably wouldn't go in one of those albums, but it would work as a standalone image, would it not? And again, same girl. But look at all the opportunities that we have to actually photograph. So now when it comes to a wedding, obviously I don't have time to go through all of this stuff. We obviously have the main album. We have parent albums. We have the wall art for the couple, the wall art for the parents, thank you cards, portrait sessions, and so on. I don't want you to offer everything all at once. You've got to digest it one thing at a time. So personally, my collections will only ever include product. So for example, with this particular couple, you know, this could be a thank you card. It's a low-hanging fruit. Of course, we could have wall art. But if you use a program like Fundy Software and maybe Graphy Studio Products, whatever it is that you guys use, you can show to scale what things look like in the actual room on the walls of their home. It's a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you want that? Then people say, I just don't want photos of myself on the wall. But why wouldn't you? You want to celebrate. You will never look better than you are right now. You know when people look at themselves and they say, I don't really like the way I look. I'm not really confident with myself. They trust me, 10 years from now, you love the way you look right now. <laughs> All right, let's pivot quickly to portraits. Okay, I mean, that was portraits. Obviously, we emulated an engagement session, emulated a wedding. But let's say you did a family portrait. Let's say mother, father, and a son. And I'm showing you deliberately simple stuff. I'm not showing you my best work that I've ever taken. I'm showing you solid, consistent, saleable work. We can all do this. Now, how did I take this shot? This was my open garage door, a continuous light behind him, offering him some separation. It was a black velvet background. So there we are. I take one shot looking at the camera, one shot looking away. I've sold them both. I've got the same shot looking at the camera, I just cropped it a little bit differently. 105 millimeter macro, I love shooting tight. And then, but again, you would say all these were saleable, would you not? Don't waste your time photographing things that you're not gonna sell. Now, of course, if you're actually photographing um, a couple, a heterosexual couple, and then you've got um, a son, then you wanna do every combination. So let's say while the mother and the wife are getting the hair and makeup done, I'm gonna basically milk dad, I'm gonna milk the husband, you know, all that kind of stuff, and I'm gonna get the shot. So, of course, I want photographs, father and son. I mean, amazing gene pool here, right? Amazing gene pool. So I've got something a little bit serious. And he, he knew how to pose. He was really cool. It was really fun. I had a great time with him. Michael here. Beautiful catch lights in the eyes. Remember, open garage door, black velvet background, continuous light. And then finally, I get Marina. She's actually a performer. She's a ballerina, but this was their family portrait. Just classic shot of her, then looking away. Then let me get them both involved. So you look at this shot, we're celebrating them as a couple. But then I said to you, don't just make photographs purposeful, but meaningful. What does this photograph say? They've only got one son. The whole world revolves around Michael. So he's front and center. Then you've got mum, who's a badass, who's confident. She's got their back. And she's just effortless. So I'm going to turn her. And we know that she's the badass, but we're actually going to feature dad and son right over here. Does that make sense? Now, yes, there'll be some that's giggling, looking into the camera. They're your bread and butter shots. I would not do those crazy crops and all those kinds of things without actually doing my bread and butter shots. It's really important to know that. Get the shots. Do what you have to do to do what you want to do. Looking at the camera, looking off. Beautiful gap between the chin there as well. I just love to play. Something subtly so different. The panoramic shot over here as well, eyes down, very delicate. What I do like to do with the Nikon camera system, because you can use different crops, you can shoot 16 by nine, you can shoot one by one. I shoot black and white in camera. Now, although I'm photographing in raw, I can certainly do anything I want afterwards, but if I see it in black and white, I will photograph it in black and white. So my clients are seeing my vision at the end of the day. Wouldn't you agree if you have clients, that once they see something in a particular color, it's hard to go back in black and white. 
So now I just remove that option and it's very, very simple. How am I going for time here? I'm almost there, okay. So again, beautiful. Nice negative space, turn the, way, turn the body away from the light, turn the face back in. I want you to remember, whenever you're photographing a couple, that if there's one direction of light and two people interacting, one person will suffer. And when I say suffer, he doesn't have that best light, she does. If I wanted him to have good light, again, I'll press the pause button, put them on a lazy Susan, flip them 180 degrees, or don't get them to interact, and then now I have that beautiful quality of light on both of them. So you just have to remember, one direction of light, two people interacting, one person will suffer. In this case, they're not interacting, they're all looking at the same way, life is good. But then I can soften the mood a little bit. I can basically make it more about him in this particular case. She's, uh, her eyes are looking down, hers is up, his is up, beautiful negative space. And then I can just crop that little bit differently. I love the idea of cropping. I think it's a, such an easy way to make yourself look different on social media as well. Would you agree that when you're scrolling on social media with your thumb, that the images that are fairly closer up tend to just grab your attention, would you agree? And also, something that is arresting, that just makes you giggle. Now, these ones are fine, they're saleable, but wouldn't you agree that we all do these kinds of shots? So a very simple way, crop a little bit differently, have a little bit of fun, but give yourself and your clients more reasons to purchase from you. That's what it's all about. Okay, so now, of course, we have the classic shot, looking at the camera, smiling, interacting. It's fun, it works well. And again, I love these kinds of shots where it's black on black, it's very rich, it's very luxurious. Obviously, what you need to do, guys, you need to remember who you're photographing, what does it mean to them, where the photograph's going to end up, ask about their home, ask about their sensibilities. And it's amazing that when you do that, everything starts coming in line. For example, let's say you said to me, Jerry, how do, you, how do you actually control the portrait session? How do you respond to someone when they, someone rings you? If a, if a bride, let's say, a mother rang me and said, I want you to do my family portrait session. I said, oh, how many kids do you have? I have two kids. Okay, great. Um, are you married? What's, what's your partner's name? Never assume that if you're photographing, if you're actually listening to a, to a woman's voice, or what you believe to be a woman's voice, that she's automatically heterosexual. You'll say, hey, what's your partner's name? So you write that down. So now you've got the information. As you ask every question, you're writing everything down. Tell me about your son. Oh, my son is into soccer. He's a mad soccer fan. He loves Ronaldo and Messi, whatever. I said, great. Does he play for a sports team? Yes, he does. How about we get his favorite jersey? We get him with a soccer ball in the photograph. Okay, that's him taken care of. Now, what, does, uh, what is your... She, they, she mentioned they has a daughter. What does your daughter do? Well, she's a, a bookworm. She just loves books and she's totally immersed in it. She's just, she's crazy about that stuff. I go, where, where does she normally read? She, I, she need, reads where this, near this lamp over here and the books are piled up next to her bedside and she's just a consuming knowledge. Great. So we're going to have her favorite books in this particular shot. We're going to have her favorite spotlight and she's going to be in the portrait. Okay, what does your husband do? Well, he's into scuba diving, but he's, a very, he's also a very conservative businessman. Great, we're gonna have him with snorkels, a mask, his business suit, and he's gonna have flippers on the bottom of his feet. What do you like to do? And she goes, I love, you know, I love culinary world, but also I'm a, I'm a CEO of a company. I said, great, you're gonna be wearing an absolute, uh, this, a power suit, and you're gonna be cooking and going there. Now, do you see the portrait coming into your brain right now? Whereas someone else, another photographer, would actually answer that inquiry and give the price over the phone within 30 seconds, Whereas I might get to know my client, work out what's meaningful to that person, and I'm constructing that photograph right there and then. They can picture it. I said, well, how about when we're here, we'll take photographs of everyone individually, on their own, together, children together, the, the couple shots, mother and son, mother and daughter, father and, father and son, father and daughter, all of you together. What am I doing? I'm saying, my challenge is to take the most beautiful and meaningful photographs you can possibly imagine not only meet your expectations, but exceed them, your challenges to resist. I've said that four or five times in this presentation, so hopefully it won't leave your brain, because again, you have to condition your clients that they are going to spend money with you and have no fear or no shame. If you make it flattering, you make it purposeful and meaningful, it will sell itself. But will it? You have, you have to offer the client's product. And again, when you look at this shot on its own, now that I've actually told you 
the meaning behind it, it's irresistible. Tell me a family that wouldn't buy that as a 40 by 60. Did it take me a lot of work to get to that portrait? I opened up my garage door, I put a continuous light behind them, that little edge light, and that was it. When it's meaningful, it will sell. When it's meaningful, it will sell. Tell me, think about the most important photograph that you own. Think about the most important photograph that you own, remember? Got it in your brain? Let's say you had it physically, and let's say you gave it to me, and I enjoyed it, and I appreciated it, and I grabbed the photograph, and it was the last photograph that ever existed of this person in this photograph, no digital copy, and I grabbed it, and then I tore it up. What would you do to me? You would jump over the counter, you would run, you would grab me by the throat, I mean, you would be aggressive, you would freak out. It's probably worth killing for or even dying for. So you telling me that we are acting like photography is disposable with a thumb and we can't sit there and pause for a moment and work out how to give such an incredible product to our clients, we have to remember that what we do is life changing. What we do will outlive us all. Wouldn't you agree? But we have to start acting like it. Give your couples no choice. Include physical product. Include physical product. What time have I got here? Oh, okay, we're doing pretty well for time. If you've enjoyed what I've been teaching, I know many of you I've been seeing over the years, I've actually had lots of hugs from you already. Uh, I'd love to actually be with you for five days. If you get a chance, if you're online or watching at home, just remember jerryjerryjerry.com. Uh, jump on there and you'll see a link to the workshop. I'd love to spend five days with you. Let me talk about what's meaningful again. Now, I want you to remember, who has a parent here? Who, who has kids here? Who has kids? Okay, tell me, the very first time your children gave you a drawing, remember this. Who remembers their drawing? The first drawing ever that they gave. Okay. Now, some of you may still have it, I'm assuming. Some of you may have actually put it on the actual fridge. Some of you may put it in a, into a bit of a box. I'm saying to you that that photograph or that, that drawing with crayons, was that technically perfect? Was that drawing like proportionate? It was probably stick figures. The house was disproportionate. There was a dog that didn't look like a dog. It just looked weird. There was coloring outside the lines. Let's just face it. It was a bad drawing. But because it was meaningful, it was valuable. So if you're watching at home and you're watching in this particular room and you're like, I will never be able to, pho to photograph like this or that and get intimidated by the speakers that you see, I am telling you, it does not matter. Your craft matters, 100%. I'm all about the craft. If you know me, you know that. I'm saying though, you can compete with anyone in the world by simply being meaningful. You do something that's meaningful, like that drawing of your child, and it was a crappy drawing, I'm saying to you, you do the same thing for clients. And now if you can craft it, you can master that craft, and then more importantly, add an incredible experience associated with those photographs being taken, well now we have something worth selling. So don't feel like you can't compete with that that you have to be an amazing photographer to do it. A lot of these shots are pretty simple. Some of them are maybe more elaborate. What I ended up finding out that in fact she was a ballerina and I'm like, well, we've got to use that in the portrait. All those other shots, wouldn't you agree, those, all those black and white shots, so if we go back one, all of that, if I just all of a sudden had a red dress showing it, would, look, would have looked a little bit weird. So now if I go back, now, I found out she's a ballerina. I had this dress in, in, the, in the wardrobe um, for my studio. I put her on a pedestal, and she just looks like a queen. Remember, turn the body away from the light source, turn the face back in. And this one, I hid the actual pedestal to make it feel like, you know those fashion drawings where the body sort of exaggerated and lengthened and all that kind of stuff? And then if you want something meaningful still, how about something like this, neutral tones? Just beautiful light coming in. This was two garage doors. I opened up one, I closed the other, so the direction of light was flooding in this way. I put a black V-flat over here, so it cut away some shadows from this side. Now, you could pose somebody like this, no problem. You can pose them. Architecturally, it's emotional, wouldn't you agree? But imagine if you had the power, with your voice, to say something so simple that evokes that kind of emotion. Now, what would I say? It could be, just with the warmth of your head, I want you to say how much you love each other. Mum, I want Michael to know, just with the way 
the warmth of your shoulder and your arm and your head caressing his head and your back to back tell me that you love him without saying a single word that's what emotion looks like the power to evoke emotion is so powerful did some of you get goosebumps me talking about it why because we all human we all have parents you know most of us have siblings so it relates and often who shoots maternity here who photographs maternity okay what kind of shots do you guys do We all do those shots, would you agree? How many ways can you pose hands on a belly? How do you make it more emotional? Okay, so let's say you have the expected mother over here. Then you have the expected parent over here. Let's say the father, expected father. The cuddling, look at the camera, smile, great. There's a shot, fantastic, life is good. Then, how do you make it more emotional? How do you actually draw that emotion out where everyone else is photographing the exact same thing? I might say to the expected mother, just with the warmth of your hands, show me how much you love your daughter. You know what happens? It's no longer a pose, it's a moment. The shoulders go up, the faces turn in, like we've humanized the baby. The baby's still cooking in the oven right now. Like we've humanized the baby, and then all of a sudden, that the way the tension in the brow happens, do you think someone would say, I just want a JPEG of that, thanks? It's almost comical. You need to make it personal. You need to make it irresistible. What did we say at the start of this conversation? They need to resist. If it's meaningful and flattering and beautiful, they're not going to resist it, they're going to buy it. That's if you offer printed product. And at the end, we ended up doing something like this. And again, I sort of wanted, you know, the badass mum in the middle. I love her, uh, her on point. And even though the guys have the, uh, the eye contact with the camera, you, you can see that Everyone's looking at her, of her grace, of her beauty, certainly the color palette, but her sort of breaking that, that tone there. So remember, guys, you have to be purposeful, you have to be meaningful, you have to include printed product in your price list. I want you to do this like your life depended on it. Not just shoot pretty pictures and have some fun and then hope we sell something. If you're doing it as a business, treat it like a business. I love playing, I love getting a subject and going out there and playing, but that's on my terms. The problem is a lot of us in this room would say, I don't want to sell because I don't like to be sold to. Put your hand up if you like that. I don't want to sell because I don't like to be sold to. You are sold to every day of your life. You are in a trade show. You are being sold to everywhere you look. Do you begrudge companies offering a product or service unashamedly because they think that they can give you a better product and a great service. Why wouldn't they do that? You have the option to say no. If you've already captured their attention and you're actually already photographing them, I am telling you, you need to photograph for purpose and for profit. My name is Jerry Jonas, your favorite Australian. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.